Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Creme to News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. It's good to have you here. I'm Whitney Ward. Spokane County Prosecutor Larry Haskell speaking out today about the recent revelations of racist comments made by his wife, Leslie. Our own Ian Smay was at that press conference. He joins us live now in the newsroom with more. Ian. Yeah, this was Haskell's first time publicly speaking about his wife's comments after the Inlander first reported on them on January 27th. He had released statements about the story, but today he apologized for her comments. Leslie Haskell made racist comments on the far-right social media website Gab. Those comments included calling MSNBC host Joy Reid, a black woman, the N-word. She also described herself as a proud white nationalist. Haskell said he apologized for the pain caused to his office and the public created by her comments. However, he said his wife isn't racist. I believe that her comments were racist. I have known that woman for 30 years. And I do not believe she is a racist, but what she wrote was racist. Haskell also said his office is diverse and he specifically guides them to not pursue suspects or cases based on race. He added that he doesn't share his wife's views. Coming up at 5 and 6 tonight, I'll have more from Haskell as well as Spokane Human Rights Commissioner member An Anwar Peace. For now, in the newsroom, Ian Smay, Crim 2 News. In our ongoing Boomtown series, we are tracking how the growing population here in eastern Washington and northern Idaho is impacting the community. So we asked how the Spokane International Airport is going to keep up with that pace. So for starters, we're told the airport's most pressing challenge has been parking. Over the course of three years, it did realign the roadway leading into the airport, which created room for about 1,900 additional spaces. The airport also added six more nonstop flight destinations since 2019. CEO Larry Croder actually told our Amanda Rowley why he hopes to add even more. Anytime we can make it easier for someone out in the global economy to get to Spokane with one stop, we have accomplished the mission. So that's why it's so critical for us to add these flights. What do you anticipate the airport looking like by 2040? Well, join us tonight on Creme 2 News at 6 o'clock. We're going to find out what the CEO expects the Spokane Airport to look like in the future. And proof of another way Spokane is on the map, this time in sports. World-class <laughs> athletes and even Olympians are here for tonight's Lilac Grand Prix. Yeah, one of them may break a world record tonight. And they are in, uh, they are over, they're awed by our Spokane's newest sports venue. It's called the Podium, as you well know. And that's where we have our very own uh, Krem 2's Kyle Simchuk. He is right there. Kyle, so this is a pretty big deal now for Spokane. Tom, very exciting, and this is the first professional event at this venue, and consider this, podium officials say their 10-year goal was to host a record-breaking, world record-breaking race, and they're going to try to do that tonight. So competing tonight are Olympians, world team members, and national record holders. Races range anywhere from 600 meters to 5,000 meters. The podium partnered with Union Athletic Club, a pro running group based out of Portland, Athletes told us they like how close the venue is to downtown and that Spokane could easily become the indoor running capital of the West Coast. We, we train in Portland, Oregon, where um, it's arguably one of the coolest track facilities in the world. It's a track in the woods. And um, as soon as we walked into this facility in Spokane, all of our jaws were dropped. Uh, it's one of the best indoor tracks I've ever been to, if not the best. So the Lilac Grand Prix starts tonight at 550. General admission is $13.25. A thousand people are expected to watch the races. The podium is booking up this winter with 13 track meets on the calendar this season, including nine this month alone. And coming up at five, we're going to look at the economic impact this uh, new venue could have on the city of Spokane. Reporting from the podium, Kyle Simcha, Krem 2 News. All right, Kyle, thank wow. you very much. Yeah, we're so excited about yeah. what this means <laughs> for the future. Of exciting. City. Very cool. Well, the rapid growth across the region also, though, driving up prices, and it makes keeping up with bills a lot harder for low-income families. Well, now you've probably seen a few RVs that have been parked around town. It's easy to assume that they're abandoned, but some of them aren't. We decided to knock on their doors. Here's who we met. Posted up somewhere in Spokane. I'm not sure, it's just it's alongside of the road. This is where we found Chris Bill and his girlfriend. 
my, uh, my RV, place of living. Depending on who you ask, you'll hear drastically different reactions to RVs like this one. Hopefully we're not in this situation too long. For Chris, it's not ideal, but it's better than nothing. There's just not too many places or, you know, options. After losing their jobs and falling back on rent. I ended up, you know, getting kicked out of our home, so. It's been one month living out of this RV. It can be a little difficult, disappointing, but, you know, goal, goal orientated. We'll, we'll be back there you know, back on her feet in no time. A temporary setback for Chris. Yeah. But for Melissa. Uh, it's my home. It's a step up. It's better than um, freezing our butts off in a tent like we were. A different perspective on an RV Melissa has called home for two years. When you're out here, this becomes your home. She's been homeless for 11 years. I just got tired of paying bills, and that's the truth. Once on the streets, getting back inside seemed impossible. You have to have, um, the first month's rent, and then you have to have the deposit, and then you have to have that um, mover's fee. Then after that, you have to um, also be able to make the qualifications. And I don't. Saving up that money is hard with an RV. Because of how old it is, it's a chore. The RV has to be running so Melissa can move when she gets flagged by traffic enforcement. I already had it in power once. I just had to go do laundry. I get back and it's gone. Neighbors report abandoned cars and RVs to the city, a system that's backed up with complaints. The volume is, has certainly gone up a little bit in terms of the number of abandoned vehicles. The city has to figure out if an RV is abandoned, the owner is just breaking a rule, or if someone is living in it. We emphasize the rules of the road. 24-hour stay rules, no parking rules, registration rules, even if the RV is a home. Objective is always to keep the occupant in the vehicle and to make sure it's safe for everybody. It's a balancing act between the neighbor's perspective and the people needing a roof over their heads. So when we talked to the city spokesperson, Brian Coddington, he explained that RVs are also much harder to tow. So he says, for example, when one breaks down and then does end up abandoned, mm -hmm. it costs about $1,000 each for the city to remove, which is hundreds of dollars more than just a regular abandoned car. All right, we're going to switch gears. We want to send things outside and look I at know. that sunshine uh, on fabulous. a Friday evening. Man, it was great. I actually had lunch outside in nice. my car, Ooh. but uh, felt good. You know, you get that uh, little greenhouse effect in the there car. There you go. Very, very comfortable. Blue sky sunshine. Would you like that for the weekend? Mm -hmm. Good, because I think we're going to bring that to you for most of the weekend. 48 degrees right now. We've got a little bit of a breeze out of the northeast at nine miles per hour. Satellite radar picture shows the only cloud cover we're seeing down around uh, Pennsylvania and the Walla Walla area, and that's just light clouds anyway. So tomorrow we'll look for an overnight low of 24. Uh, so again, it is cold in the morning, but then we'll see a daytime high of 43. Sunday, I think we're going to see a daytime high of 45 degrees. I'll check your seven day forecast in just about 10 minutes. Well, a very special guest making an appearance in the kennel last <laughs> night. After the break, we are catching up with GU superstar Jalen Suggs.